Hey guys, how's it going? Two things today. First off, we're gonna plant our ranunculus and anemones, which we started the pre-sprouting process with uh, about 12 days ago, and they are ready to go. And then we are gonna get out and till the cut flower garden space, which means as soon as it's tilled, we can put all of our plant supports in place, like our staking system for our dahlias. We can run our irrigation, and then that spot will be ready to go whenever we're ready to plant things, which is so exciting. So we're gonna be planting the ranunculus and anemones here in the vegetable garden actually I'm gonna utilize this a lot for early flowers like I've got tulip bulbs in this bed and that bed almost a thousand um, and then let's see I think we're gonna be putting the ranunculus in this bed here anemones in this bed here I kind of plan on using the vegetable garden and the cut flower garden kind of uh, I don't know however I need to so I'm gonna be growing some vegetables out in the cut flower garden some flowers in the vegetable garden I don't know it's just nice because the irrigation is already set up in this area even though we don't have our water on yet we'll be hand watering for a little while but the soil is a little bit warmer because it's in elevated beds and I just thought it would be a nice contained area to plant these since we're all ready to roll and I'll show you what the corms look like here in a second I brought them up from the basement already I but I didn't want to really bring them outside until we had the beds all prepared so in the back of the gator here I have the land and sea compost some biotone starter fertilizer which I add these into the raised beds whenever I plant something new then I just got some super hoops in from Gardner Supply, which is this right here. So you can see the one, two, three, four, let's see, yeah, one, two, three, four super hoops is what is holding up that garden quilt right there over some greens. So that is what I'm gonna be putting over these beds just to help retain some heat. And then I've got a garden fork here to help kind of turn in all of these ingredients. Yeah, so I didn't actually count how many corms I have, but I'm thinking two raised beds will be enough. I don't have as many anemones as I do ranunculus. So let's get these things added in, get the soil all prepped, and probably, eh, I think I'll do the super hoops after I'm done planting and everything's kind of settled in place. Raised beds have been prepared, so I just sprinkle the Biotone starter fertilizer on generously. I hardly ever measure. And then I use a couple inch layer of land and sea compost. So for this bed, which is a three by six and a 12 inch board here, I used about a bag and a half. And for the three by four size bed over here, I used about three quarters of a bag of the compost. I went and gathered a few more supplies in preparation for planting. I got my kneeling pad there and some markers. I almost forgot about this step. This is important to make sure that uh, you know what you have growing and where. Aren't these pretty? These are the copper plant markers. These I got from Gardener Supply. My parents' garden center has them too. It's what my parents have been using in their garden forever. Kind of a pretty way to indicate what you've got growing. I want to show you what the corms look like as well. It's amazing how different these look versus when I very first started the soaking process. So you might remember the corm looked like a dried up tiny little octopus. And then when you soak them for the three to four hours, they kind of swell up like almost doubling in size. And then they've doubled at least again in size in the pre-sprouting phase. And when you pre-sprout, so I went down and checked on them about every other day. I sprinkled moisture on them like I used my pump sprayer to sprinkle moisture on them twice in that process uh, because it is fairly dry down in our basement because you don't want the soil to dry completely out but you also don't want it to be too soggy and part of the point of checking on them every other day is to make sure that there's not too much moisture so you don't have any rotting going on and I don't think I have any rotting in fact they look really good so let me show you okay so this tray right here these are ranunculus this is a variety called rose so you see i have them just covered with soil it's just barely got a little bit of moisture in it and if we dig in here you can see what the corm has turned into look at this like it is huge now and you can see the new growth on the top you can see the roots that have formed so we just bought ourselves a couple weeks of growing time out here at least 
by doing the pre-sprout. Kind of want to check in this one too. This is a ranunculus called Labelle White Piketty. So, oh my, look at this. Whoa. <laughs> that one's ready to roll. Look at that. Beautiful roots, beautiful new growth. Now let's check on the anemones, which are right here. I'm gonna dig around in here. These weren't quite as, like some of them have, like this one has roots, but they're not super long yet. Like I could wait a little bit longer, I think on these, but I'm gonna go ahead and plant them. Right there, you can see some nice roots. So anyway, I think they'll all be fine. There's some roots here, just some of them are a little bit further along than others. So our ranunculus we plant about nine or so inches apart and two to three inches underneath the soil, tentacles pointing down so that new growth can come up through the surf top of the soil surface. And then for our anemones, we do about every six inches is the spacing, two to three inches down, and then we point, we uh, plant it with the pointy side. See, you can see the way the roots are growing. Um, so pointy side down and it's got kind of this flattened top part that's facing up. And I'm not going to make a trench or anything. I think what I'm going to do is just put my tags where I want each variety and then I'll line the corms up on the soil surface and then what I'll do is just kind of plant them each individually. I think that'll go a lot faster. So let's get started with that. Okay, so you can see all the corms laying on the top of the soil surface there. Now, if I space these out like I should, I can only fit two varieties in this three by six bed and I have five. I was thinking I could fit all five in this one bed and then the anemones in that bed, but no dice, it's not working. So we're just gonna have to utilize more raised bed space up here in this garden which is not a bad thing. And I don't know, we're gonna have to see how the anemones go. All the bulbs still look really good. A lot of them have roots, but some of them don't. So we just might have a succession of blooms going on. We'll see. So with these, again, uh, space six inches, bury them two to three inches deep, and you plant them pointy side down. The flattened top part is where the new growth comes out. So now that I have them all laid out, it makes it nice that I can see all the corms just sitting there and I can see the spacing, I can see how it looks, and now I can just bury all of them individually two to three inches deep, it's pretty easy. So we've got two varieties of ranunculus in this bed. We've got rose and marshmallow. I've got three more varieties. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and plant them in this L-shaped bed. All three of these beds now have ranunculus and anemones. It's gonna be so pretty. So now I need to put the drip back in all of these. I saved the drip in this bed and that bed. I just kind of flung it out into the walkway. So I'll rerun that. And then I need to run new in that far bed just because I had cut it earlier. Um, so anyway, it needed to be replaced. And I'm using the quarter inch brown drip tubing with the emitter holes spaced every six inches. Works really well. Drip is almost done in the first two beds. I ran a little bit short. I ran the drip a little bit differently last year because I wasn't planting edge to edge like I did today. So I'll just add a little bit of extra length to the end of that one. And then I need to add about a foot to the end of this one. So not too bad. But I thought I would show you what I'm doing on the end of this. So what we have here is our faucet. And then we've got an adapter to go from our three quarter inch standard faucet to a quarter inch drip tubing. Now the brown stuff is a little bit too flexible to push up in here. We have a really hard time doing that. So we just use a piece of solid quarter inch. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this, make a fresh cut. I'm gonna use a straight coupler and then I will run brand new brown drip tubing off of this. So it'll look much the same except for it'll keep going. And then I can just run it however I need to using landscape staples to tack it down. And then when I'm done, 
I'll just pop in a little ender here. I've got them all watered in, and I wouldn't have to do that if our water was on, but it won't be on yet for probably a few more weeks, but at least the drip system is in place for when it is on, then we can start watering automatically rather than by hand. So now I'm gonna install some super hoops over all these beds. I really like the way they look. Um, they kind of create a greenhouse over each one of the beds, and that will help maintain heat levels, which will make the plants happier and grow faster. And um, it's something that you should do if uh, you have long stretches of really cold weather below freezing, which it does look like we have nights that are still gonna dip below. So I just wanna protect these as much as I can and I wanna speed along their growth as well. So if we take a look inside here, you can see what the super hoops look like. How I install them is I put the sides in, down in first and then I put the flexible tops because the tops you can kind of, you can make them a lot taller than that if you want. Uh, I think they come with more than one section and some um, connectors and I just use the one section um, to make it the lowest possible because I don't really need them to be that tall, uh, but they just provide a really nice environment for plants. The lettuce is clearly loving it. Well, the two on the end look a heck of a lot better and tidier than this one right here, but you know what? <laughs> it's gonna do the job. It's just it's very awkward with the shape of the bed and then the obelisk in the corner here. But the point is we've got everything kind of snugged in for the colder nights. We shouldn't have to leave these on for very long. So I did weigh the fabric down with bricks, which isn't the most efficient way, especially because they now have the, they now have clips that are proper for these hoops. I'm not sure that they had them when I initially got my super hoops, or I just didn't notice that they had them. But anyway, I've ordered them, they're on their way. Um, and not only will they make it look better and be more efficient, but it'll be easier to get up underneath the hoops to water uh, until our water system is turned on. I shouldn't have to do that too much though because of the cool temperatures. I'll check them probably twice a week. We'll toss a little bit of water on them if they needed it, if it has been dry and warm. Um, but ranunculus and anemones, I know ranunculus usually bloom about 90 days after planting and I think it's close to the same thing with anemones. Um, so I'm assuming, especially if we keep the covers on um, and because we pre-sprouted them, we should see some blooms in May. And if we're really lucky, we may even see um, some blooms sooner than that. Okay, so that is it for this project. Um, so now we are gonna go till up the space, the cut flower garden space on the new property, and I cannot tell you how excited I am for that. So I need to go see what Aaron's doing. There's nothing really I'm gonna be doing for this other than kind of watching in excitement. Ready to do this? Yes. I got all of the corms planted. So that is done, they're covered. Nice. And now we get to till. Not we, you get to till. Are you excited about it? I am, I'm really excited. <laughs> I was um, thinking, I don't know if I like this last tree, Erin, right oh, yeah. here. I think it's gonna uh, create too much of a barrier from the house. It's gonna be too imposing, too big. Not the two far ones, but this one here. I'm not sure though. That's what like I'm, it. I'm glad that we just set him there. Is that a rake that's supposed to be there? Yeah. Right here? It's just a hole right there, so I just put it in there in case I need it. Why would break something out. Well, there you go. I was actually, I had it when I was spreading a little bit of mulch. Uh-huh. Oh, I see. You so were using really the bucket. So have the bucket. You drop right. it and you can jump out and grab your rake. Yeah, you guys, we got a huge truckload of mulch. It doesn't look very huge, but that's 50 yards, right? It's a lot of mulch. It's a lot of mulch. It looks like this little itty bitty pile. <laughs> but it'll go a long way, I think. I hope so. It's pretty. <laughs> I think once these corners are tilled up, it's gonna be a lot easier to tell. 
kind of the design layout. Right now it's just so hard with these stakes. Look at all of that leaf mulch. Isn't that awesome? We're gonna spread that out and work it in. So the spot he is tilling first is where I think I'm gonna do sunflowers and corn and millet and amaranth, the taller items, taller things. as much fun doing this as I'm going to have watching this. So I think what we'll do, I think he's gonna probably wanna get his drone out so you guys can see the pattern kind of starting to take shape. Um, and then in the end when he's all done, I'll give you a little tour. to me to see all of these corners all tilled up. We can start in with our plant supports next, which I do know that I'm going to put dahlias in this section right here so we can start putting in those support systems. Um, and then I don't really know other than sweet peas and love in a puff vine, which I think I'm going to put the ranch panels back up at least on the far end of the garden. Uh, I think everything else will just kind of leave and add in staking as necessary. Um, but as soon as the staking's done, then we can add in irrigation and then I can start planting some early stuff. Aaron said when he was out here tilling, it's a little bit of a mindless task. So he was thinking about other things, uh, which we both really like those kind of jobs every once in a while. You do get a lot of planning and, and thinking done while getting something else done at the same time. It's really kind of nice, but he forgot to lift the tiller up at one point and he, uh, tilled right through one of the pathways and uh, he was really trying to stay just within the four corners so it looked really cool and all the like drone footage and stuff but he fixed it he brought me out here and I couldn't even tell where he had done it he brought a tamper out and kind of tamped it down but you can see kind of the outline here of the center square which is quite large um, like from stake to stake it's 13 feet so 13 feet 13 feet we might not keep that square we might round it off like this, but the intention is to have a bench in each corner flanked by a couple of pots and then a fountain of some kind right in the middle. And we uh, kind of sketched out what an eight foot fountain basin would be. And I think it's a tiny bit small. It might be perfect, I don't know. We'll probably go anywhere between eight and 10 feet for a fountain here at some point. But it's nice that the pathways are so wide because it just gives you so much more flexibility. Like we can drive our truck in here if we want. In fact, we came out here with the kids the other night 
in the truck and we were able to turn right down this pathway right in front of the cut flower garden in between the orchard and the and the flower garden so anyway it's actually 15 feet it's more than 15 feet right here um, because we wanted to accommodate for the eventual canopy of the fruit trees so in the end when the fruit trees are mature we will still have 15 feet right here so we shouldn't be they shouldn't be in the way at all but you can see our tracks right there and just looking at this makes me so excited i mean knowing what kind of experience we had last year on untested ground and going in so late and just knowing we're so much earlier this year and so much more prepared it's just a really fun feeling and i can already see cat prints and benjamin prints through all the soft soil <laughs> there's russell and cheddar or cheddar <laughs> and there's benjamin <laughs> My parents came out here last night just to see everything. And my dad said, everywhere that Benjamin, you can see a Benjamin print somewhere in your garden, you should plant a bulb right in that spot. So you can see like a bulb track of wherever he has gone in the garden. Um, anyway, <laughs> that was kind of an interesting idea. So the next thing that we're gonna see out here, other than working on the irrigation and the staking systems as we have time to do it, and I'm not even really ready to plant anything out here yet, so I don't feel like in a huge hurry so lovely um we will be seeing the six foot fence go in right behind the orchard so it will hide all of the palletized items and we don't have a neighbor that can see that stuff i know that that was a concern of some of you guys when we talked about the fence earlier and how we were going to use it to store our pallet pallets of soil and mulch and things like that our uh, neighbor's house is situated in, in a way that their barn and shop and all of their stuff like their tractor and all of that is actually between this and their house so um, it should all be good and we keep everything pretty organized anyway but it'll be nice to see that kind of thing go in because it will be stained black we'll be able to see as soon as the uh, leaves the trees leaf out we'll be able to see the orchard a little bit better and i do think we may work on the shed this year we'll see i don't know things are shaping up fast fast and furious around here this spring so it's very exciting anyway that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one Bye. Here comes the culprit of some of the footprints. What are you doing, Russell? What are you doing? Hey.